where the person should have been bodeg the reasons for it, what he's doing. And then, if he can catch himself that, to use the same chachma opposite, he has the same way, he can tie and untie, he can do this maisa, and he, the, kid, the guy can lose and, get, and have not to get the, uh, the maisa, or he can go away in the same way to figure out how the, the guy can now get the maisa. That was, he has a way of, he's in their hands to yes and to not. Oh, the Rebbe had to help him. Dovashani, I mean, so that person has to check himself this way. And Dovashani, the person, what was the svara of Rabbi Huda Nasi? He gave one year, two years, three years. <clears throat> there must have been better guys. On that I can hear two svaras. One is the famous story of, I think it's Rav Chaim Halevi, I'm not sure it was, but there was a woman came to him, or some rabbi, a woman came to him and asked him for uh, for money for a, uh, for, uh, for a, uh, it was, uh, she, needed to get, she needed to get a shidduch, she had to get clothing, she gave her money, and then uh, she came and said, now she has to, uh, just to make Tanoim, and now they need money for a wedding. So the, the Rebbitson said, listen, there's so many good, poor people to give you money. What are you giving to this woman for? She already got the shit. Things happen. What do you got to do? Give the money elsewhere. She says, how come all of a sudden you think of it now to give to the other people, the poor people? Maybe that's what he had all of a sudden now. Uh, the second thing is Mitzara Din. If a person so make on your stockers. You're not allowed to cut them off. We brought down a a uh, a medish tanhuma that if you cut it off, it's worse. You lose all your money. So once the kid was <laughs> so mech on it, <clears throat> so it's chaval to to remove it. <clears throat> That's why people give to the same mishulach going around. I don't know why, but all the time they don't want to cut it off. <clears throat> so that I can understand. And I can understand the Talmidim. Why do you say that not Muslim? Because after they learned this Misa from Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, so then they became Sholem, they understood what to do and not to. But normally, there's a natural feeling, even Talmidim, to their other Chavah who they love, that because of their, um, their um, personalized uh, interest or Tzedek, I don't want to say the word, I would say the word Tzedek, <clears throat> that, <clears throat> that they're ready to do Maisim. The question is, do we fit into that category or not? Ourselves. Now I would ask everybody to give me an example how he fits in the category. What's the right? If you're a Muslim, you don't fall in that category. If you're not a Muslim, which most people aren't, this time we all fall into the category. So I would ask you, how do you fall into that category? In deeds of your life. I had a different story to tell. <clears throat> I had the book on the table. If anybody saw the book here, I had, <clears throat> I had it here yesterday on uh, Risho Salanta. It was on the table in the other room there. I put it there and it disappeared. <clears throat> I wanted to read that story today. <clears throat> it's an important story. The same Kasha. The story is Rosh Hashanah was on a train. And uh, quickly, he was on a train and he was smoking and came along uh, a young guy in the same coach and said, Listen, you know, shut the cigarette, bothers me. <clears throat> shut the window, the cold. <clears throat> then he came to uh, the city and he saw it was Chavetz Chaim. He asked the I mean, besides, I'm Michael. And then he said, What's your business? <clears throat> and came for Be a Sheikh. And he failed the exam. He sat and got him. 
My, my situation, my kasha was a simple one. Who are we? Are we the, the guy sitting in, the young guy sitting on the car? Because huh? he had a good reason. I can't stand smoke and I'm cold. I'll pay You have to watch it. <clears throat> but the Shiloh was, he said, had I known the Chafetz Chaim, what would I have done? And if he wasn't the Chafetz Chaim, what do you do? How do we treat people not giving them, I don't say the right, or any cover of them? How do we treat people and push our ideas and our thoughts and our interests when it comes to other people to do? How do we do? In this case, is <clears throat> there's a little harsh case, make sure he loses the money. But shutting the window and, and, and making the guy, oh man, not smoke, okay, so health reasons. Cancer is the best thing in the world. They have all justifications. <laughs> but he was the Chavetz Chaim. He wouldn't do it. Why? Why wouldn't he do it in the Chavetz Chaim? Why not? Same law. <laughs> Cigarettes are cancerous. Air are catching a cold. What, what's the difference? My not give me in And then the other way around. <clears throat> Assuming somebody did those things to us. Are we like the Chavetz Chaim? Or the Shal Salanta? That Michael, and what does Michael mean? Michael means, what does it mean? I got this still hatred in my heart. Do I go out of my way to help one? Lend me the money? Do we act like a Chofetz Chaim or a Rishol Salanta? Will we do that? Bad enough you hurt me, I'm Michael you, I got to help you. And waste my time. And the Chofetz Chaim's time is valuable. Because when the Chavetz Chaim <coughs> got the covet as the Chavetz Chaim as an old man, an old man knows he's going to Olam Haba and every minute counts. He has to claw Yisrael, he has to learn, he doesn't have to tithe with regular people. He's working on his Olam Haba. His time is value for the claw. Usually a young guy thinks he's, his time is value. As long as you get older, your time becomes more valuable. You know, your time is running out. This time is running out. Look what the Chavetz Chaim did with his time. Imagine sitting with a guy with bad midos <clears throat> and teaching him after the guy failed and he thought he knew in a Balgaivenik. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? The in a to to uh, to learn with the guy. And just to get a chutzpah the guy went for an examination, didn't know to work. And you know, he fools himself in his learning. He thinks he knows. He thinks he can fake the world out. He sat and learned with a guy like that. Well, good the learning went good. After he learned what he do, got him a job. Did the guy change his midos? Did he say the Chavetz Chaim sat when him worked on his midos? He told him the material. <clears throat> Maybe he did change his midos. According to the book, the story, the guy said, listen, I don't deserve it. He said, no, don't worry about it. You're none of now. You know, I mean, Maybe he did change. Where are we? In either side of the fence, where are we? But, but before you leave, just there, not talking to you personally, think of on the side of the fence what you do. Good intentions, meaning well. A man has to be so careful what he does. Before a man speaks or acts, he has to be very careful how it affects what it does to his wife, to his kids, to his chaverim, to his rebbe, and learning. That's why Chachomim talk Belosh and Ketzara. Kol Amar Basicha, Misha, what do you talk to you? Why even the wife do you talk to much? Say for them, why is it falling? If you talk too much, you're falling into holes. I don't say, no, you got to talk. I mean, you don't talk, you'll have a worse problem. <clears throat> but I mean to say, you got to watch what you say and how you say and what you do and how you do it. Anyway, <clears throat> I really bought the book to, to talk to the Israelis. Because an Israeli mentality is this story here. <clears throat> For their interest, <coughs> they do a lot of strange things. You 
If you can harness their interest, your interest and their interest are together to get money or do anything, you, you'll win out a lot. <coughs> but you have to know. <coughs> but again, the Israelis have a real hard problem. <coughs> the Americans are not as much in this problem. But they catch them. The Israelis, it's very hard to, even if you catch them, to prove to them the Negeas, it's so hard, you have no idea. And what they do when they have a Negea, in the Shire. And I assume Eretz Yisrael has that quality, because Eretz Yisrael brings chutzpanim, it says, more baitza. The person guy doesn't learn to ask chutzpah. But Eretz Yisrael itself has that quality. Somehow, I don't know. We have to become Tamidim Shleimim. It's hard, it's work. A woman is always this way. Her interest, her way, she'll twist and turn the world <coughs> and prove that black is white and for her way. That's the nature. But Tamidim Chachamim can't be that way. Okay, anyway. <coughs> I want to know how does an anav relate to his fellow human beings? Well, how does a proper person, according to the Ramban, what does he do or how does he act when he relates to somebody? So the Ramban says, Behold, Rafa, you benachas. Everything you speak, you talk benachas. Al yikro ish al real taneu bakorum rak benachas. And there's a bigger picture. Kohime lifne rabo. When you're there also, <coughs> you have complaints because you're in front of Hashem. So it's not just a relation between person and person, it's a relation between person, <coughs> person and Hashem in the picture where the camera is going. So you have benachas. It says, Tishbaye, Shavuot, Busha. So now we have Busha, Nachas, Complacency, Busha. And what else? But how do you, okay, a little Busha, because you're embarrassed from people. I gotta say that. Human being, in front of Hashem, human beings. It's a, and other Rabbi, you're supposed to have those. In other words, when Roshim ben Yo, when uh, Rav Yochanan ben Zakkai said uh, that uh, he was going to die, uh, he's ready to die, and they asked him, uh, "New, uh, tell us a word." And he says, "Listen, you should have fear of God like you have fear of people." <laughs> So well, that's it, Rizal Halavai. But here it comes out in a positive sense that the fear of people is a positive thing. So you have to be Mishvayish in front of people. Adarab. <coughs> you just add a heck with the people. Main thing is God. Adarab, you're supposed to have the Busha. But the question is, how do you interrelate, interrelation between <coughs> every person? And then the answer is, The whole Adam first between you and Hashem, <clears throat> you know, it, and nothing's yours. But, but what's your relation to every person? How you look at a human, another human being? Okay, that's when you and God, you can reach that madrega. That <clears throat> you'll always see there's always greater people who come from God. Somehow to Hashem, you come a yourself and misvada. But when you get to human beings, how do you relate to them? The whole Adam yeah, God lo mimcho beinacha. Every every human being, maybe women included. Adam, because Adam is usually included even non-Jews. <coughs> okay, but not too clear. <coughs> so how can that be? How can I feel he's better than me? <laughs> I'm better than him. Im o Oshirhu, which is a f- reality. Oshir is a money. You say, Chocham is I'm smarter than him. But, but Oshir, you, you count the money in the bank. <coughs> so if he's a Oshir, Olech lechabdo, you have to give him covers. (coughs) 
mitam oshir and 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 chacham. Im rashu vato oshir chacham in. He's a poor guy, and you're rich and smart <coughs> from him. So how are you going to handle this? So he says chashay belibcha ki ato chayev mimenu vuzakem yimcha. Shim huchote hushogiv ato mezim. Have a trick. <coughs> Always think in your heart that that he's much pure. Because when you do a sin, say he's rich, you're rich in him, but when you do a sin, you're, you're amazed. He, he's a show gay. So therefore, when you look at him, even in another bechina, though in one bechina he is, but another bechina he's better than you. <coughs> so now comes the question. Why should that make a man happy should make him more depressed more down <laughs> everybody I look at has more than me so I got nothing <clears throat> I got nothing so that's zero so I answered and I said that that's how you look at him what about it? other people look at you a religious person look at you so it must be if he's religious he read the Igeris Ramban and he also will look at you bigger than him so you got self worth or if there's nobody around and you're in a desert island, <clears throat> you still have to say, how does Hashem look at me? If this is the way you have to look at life and look at every human being, so that must be that Hashem, when He looks at us, He also sees in us certain qualities. Hi, we're Zevo, we're nobody. <laughs> what are we anyway? <clears throat> the answer is, God, when He created any human being, it says in the end of Masechta, it says in the Masechta Sanhedrin, like Bishvili Nivro, every person is special, Miyuchat, everybody has that special quality in their hand. You have to find your special quality. And everybody has to feel that Hashem loves them specially, it's Miyuchat. Hi, all the other day, okay, but that's what Hashem made everybody Miyuchat. What does that give the person? <clears throat> it gives a balance where he's an honor, he still has self worth, and he's Miyuchat. Now, when it says Koladam means anybody, even if you don't know all the qualities, you still have to give him color. So you don't know. Maybe he has, he has certain qualities you don't know about. Now this little formula, if we think about it, is a wonderful formula. The only problem is, <clears throat> what's the problem here? The problem is, you're playing the game and everybody else is not playing the game. I give cover to everybody. I give cover to all these, these terrible ignoramuses. <clears throat> I give them cover. And when it comes to me, who's a chocham, a smart guy, they don't give me my cover for what I am a yuchad for. See, then you get into trouble. The answer is, you can't demand that. Because you're supposed to feel, compared to Hashem, what do you have? O o Osher is not yours, and Chochem is not. So what do you got anyway? So you cannot demand it. So where do you get your self-worth then? You get depressed. And the answer is, this is how Hashem looks at you. <coughs> or, if the guy is a religious Jew, then he'll look at you that way too. So if other people look at you, that gives you more self-worth. And if you can't get other people, at least you know Hashem looks at you. Because He created you by definition. It means you have something special, a certain task you to do in the world. Yeah. You have to assume Hashem made him, but how much more so, how much more so, how much more so if you could quickly see it. And uh, but you have to give that, that proper respect to people. And that is really the Lavush called Salam Elohim. He's, he's creating him in God. He, God created him in the world, means everybody by definition is special. <clears throat> See, that's something that I don't have. God keeps him alive. That's be a, a good reason. Unless uh, the Torah says he's a Russia. But we, don't, we, don't, we don't have a Navi to tell us. We don't have anybody. This is the way you have to act in regular life or what it is. Say, so, you know, there's a well known Russia, Hitler. How do you act then? 
So the answer is we're not talking about those type of people. We're talking about every individual who, a normal individual, who normally has the chazaka, like the Chofetz Chaim says, everyone has a chazaka that he's okay. Even 50-50, you got to give the guy the kaschos. If he's known Russia, so then uh, so it's a different story. I don't know, Russia was have to look bad on the time. But a normal person, an average person, everybody, you have to look in, the, in that positive way. If you do it, so it should bring anivas, remove gaiva, <clears throat> and keep you in the right place. Imagine a society doing that. It would work together. It would be positive. Utopia. If you ask me, what would be a good formula for utopia, I would say? Everybody thinks the other guy is better than him. After Yacho Kamocha. After Yacho Kamocha. Because <clears throat> there's a need. So the question somebody asked me, maybe you're good, but he's better. Good. You're good, but he's better. That also burns you up. Because you think you're always better, you deserve more. You're good, but he's better. He deserves it. You don't deserve it. You can say you're good and he's bad. Something to think about. <clears throat> Something to work on your kids over the weekend. How each one should give each other the credibility of being somebody and something. More than you. Because all the kids have a complaint. <clears throat> I'm the best. Why you give him? Ah, he's older. Ah, come on. Or is it this? Favorite. So the answer would be, no, everybody is special and better. I don't know if anybody will hear it. But this is a religious view. Okay, I wanted to say it anyway. Any other questions? Why should that not change your life, my friend? Why should that not change? I want to understand it. Shouldn't this change your life? This little information. Like a husband and wife can act that way. Each one sees better qualities they have than you have. But another person shouldn't take it now. You heard, oh, my better qualities better than you, so therefore I dominate you. Know? Each one has his special qualities. I was always wondering when you have, you know, they have machlekes. They would say, "Tamot tarik kinege kulam, tzitzis kinege mila kinege kulam." So, like, I mean, I just each one on its own has an even. The other one is bigger than me. Okay, I'm bigger. Each one, each one says, each one says the other one is biggest. Okay, that's a, something to think about. To say over what <clears throat> what the world says. What is creative thinking? This is a by Roger von Oich, a whack on the side of the head. What is called creative thinking? His whole tachlis is creative thinking. I once asked advertising legend Carl Alley, whoever it is, what makes the creative person think tick? Alley responded, the creative person wants to know it all. He wants to know about all kinds of things, ancient history, 19th century mathematics current manufacturing, flowering, because he never knows when these ideas might come together to form a new idea. It may happen six minutes later, 
he has faith that it will happen. I agree wholeheartedly knowledge is the stuff from which new ideas are made. Nevertheless, knowledge alone won't make a person creative. I think that we are all known people who knew lots of facts and nothing creative happened. Their knowledge just sat in their crania because they didn't think about what they knew in any new ways. The real key to being creative lies in what you do with your knowledge. <clears throat> he, didn't, he doesn't think clearly, this guy, <clears throat> but I discussed it, and it comes out like this. The first thing is you have to have the love of knowledge, all knowledge, and you want to know. Secondly, <clears throat> you want to use that knowledge. You want to use it. It doesn't lie there, you want to use it. The third thing is, is the manner in which you use it. Like a toloda, or you apply, <clears throat> or another way. But it's the usage of the knowledge, and the manner of usage of the knowledge. As I said, <clears throat> simply, the first step would be is there's a man who's a chamer no says for him. He learns all the all the ketosis, <clears throat> and he knows it. Another guy, or a guy that learns all shots, but he cannot utilize the information. <clears throat> then you have somebody who can utilize it, thinks about it, applies it. Also, we find in Yigeris and Ramban the same thing. When you learn a piece, you have to say, how will I apply it? What will I use it for? Or we said, according to Rabbeinu Yoyna, <clears throat> when you learn, you have in mind, how are you going to function? What are you going to do? How are you going to teach? It already has, it's already down. You're trying to change it from one media to another. <clears throat> but then we say, what do you have to go so far for? <clears throat> you have a Gemara. You have a Mishnah. You have a Gemara, it's right in a Gemara. You can look at the Tosos, so if you're going further away. Tosos takes a text, and he makes a deal from it, and he tries to uh, uh, say, how does this fit in with something else? It doesn't fit in. So he has a kashos, so he has to give a tarot. He has to be creative and produce a new answer which doesn't exist in the Gemara. Creative, produces what doesn't exist. He's forced to do it. <coughs> Okay, so only he can do it. Okay, good. So we say, oh, we can't handle Tosvos. We can't, but, tos, but we can take a difference between a Marshaw and a mar, Maram and in between or Shortest of Machli. We have to give a Svar and make a new year son. And that'd be like Rav Chaim HaLevi. He's <laughs> solving the big Rambam. <clears throat> but, but we can be creative. And everybody has an ability. You say, Chalkein and Basar, everybody has those. You don't have to go far over that way. You get the Gemara itself. You have a Mishnah. And you have Tanoim. Marim arguing what Tanoim say. And they produce a new, new because they have a, a difficulty. They have to see it in a new way. Or they may have a Kasha. What's an answer? Seeing it in a new way. Applying the rule another way. Or see a fact that wasn't there. You have the greatest creativity. <coughs> huh? well. In the Rabbeinu Yona. He has to have the lust and desire to learn and know. So they're saying even the lust and desire to know may just information remain. But again, I mean, again we're saying automatically a man that knows and has a lust for knowledge, part of the knowledge is to, to apply it, to understand it, to, to work on it. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, but we see, but we understand, you see, but the method that we have in the yeshiva world, which is <clears throat> Chavrusa, Chabura, Chidushe Torah, in our system that we have, it cannot be otherwise. At the end, what are you supposed to do? Be a Rosh Yeshiva, say Asfara, you have to say over to your kids, you have to write something. It's impossible. I have a Shiloh what to do. That's not written, what do you do? Of course not. There's been for those dopes out there who need a whack on their head. <clears throat> no, but, I, but my point is now another point. My point is in the Musa word. How we have to look at ourselves. 
as creative, growing people. Not that we are stagnant. What's the way you're creative? You can be creative and can you produce a Kiddush and you make money. Or you're creative and in the Gemara, the real place, in the Svar term. I brought down Rabbeinu Yona. I brought down the Chayvul <coughs> Savavas. Rav Isaac Sheer brings the Chayvul Savavas that anyone in business, in order to make money, always feels he has to produce a chiddush. He feels I'm the only guy that can figure out this. I'll open a store here or do this here. And I'll hustle people. Nobody else did it. I'll open it now. <coughs> you need a chiddush in order to make money and do anything. It's impossible. Then you have Rabbi Yekiva here. Rabbi Yekiva. to catch fish. <clears throat> you know the story of the fish. Chma doch. There's the guy who says, oh, how can I learn Torah? He's a fisherman. He says, how do you do fishing? Well, I, I got a lot of chokhme. I go out here. What do you? Yeah, wow. That's difficult. Nah. So if you can do that, it says Torah, uh, that Hashem, the, the Hashem is a fich of vocal asut. The Torah is in your mouth. Kal v'chom, you can learn Torah. <clears throat> okay. It's not what the Kavachom is, but <clears throat> anyway, it means it's a technique. It means that it can, it can be learned. If your child is not creative, <laughs> you can train your child to be creative. Because <clears throat> we have all the system to be creative. But we have a real hard part, flip, to be creative and not to throw away the Torah. It's within the framework of the Torah. Anyway, <clears throat> so we have to look at ourselves as creative individuals. We have to feel that... that